Welcome, I'm Jack Lancers, and this is an update to the Google Helpful Content Update. I know we are many months past. However, there are people still impacted by this update and still trying to recover. And I do have updated news for you. I think this is going to be useful. Um, let's dive right into it. So um, Google Helpful Content Update has been one of those updates that has impacted a, a ton of people. And since then, not many people have had recoveries. Now, we do have a recovery, and I do have potential steps to uh, aid you in a potential recovery. Now, um, I first want to go over the, the report where we were running a whole bunch of tests. And now all these tests, like real name, phone number, integrated quotes and all that, none of this worked. So I want to just be, uh, give you an update on all the tests that we, the, that we performed. Now they weren't bad, but the tests themselves, just doing straight up manipulation with Google, like adding things to the page so Google finds them and thinks that, Hey, our page is amazing. Those things didn't work. So trying to fake it essentially did not work. Adding um, a by the author line with an author page or author bio that didn't work. Um, all these things did not work. And what we have seen help websites is going to be an, unfortunately the hardest thing, which is actually improving the user experience of a website. So um, we are going to actually dive into a, a website that has recovered from the, the helpful content update. I'm going to show you that website. I'm actually going to show you how to identify the pages that might need the most amount of help. So let's kind of dive into that right now. I'm just going to dive into solutions or potential solutions. I think it's very uh, rash of me to just say, hey, you're going to do this and you're going to recover. Of course, um, everything is at your own, uh, you know, it's up to Google's will. <laughs> so I don't have no control over Google. Uh, follow this as, uh, you know, at your own risk. However, I think that this is the way forward. So the way I would personally go about it is I would go into my Google Analytics. And by the way, I hate the new Google Analytics 4, um, but it, it is going to be the one that's, that's running right now. And it does have a very insightful uh, tab. So the tab that we want to go to is going to be in your reports. You're going to want to go into the one called engagement. And it's funny because I mean, Google makes this and we have a thing called engagement. So you go to engagement and then you go landing pages. So engagement, landing pages, and then we're going to be looking for one very specific type uh, of metric. So uh, what we want to do is we want to see the average engagement time per session. This is essentially how engaged people are. Now, this doesn't give because it's it's high or low doesn't necessarily mean the page is, is amazing. However, it does give us a really good indication of which pages are most likely to have people going to them and then bouncing back to Google. So the way you uh, first of all, uh, the way you might not see you might not see any results here. So at first, I had to adjust my tracking code with uh, my uh, Google Analytics for tracking co code in order to start seeing times. And I had to put it in the header and not the footer, and it, it couldn't be de delayed. So um, if you want to get the accurate tracking times, you need to have the Google Analytics code in your header, and it needs to be the, the new GA4 one. If you just have the old uh, classic one, you might not get this average in, uh, engagement time, and then everything is going to be written zero. So I had to adjust it. If you're running into this and you're following this and everything is zero, then you're going to have to adjust it too. It's not super complicated. You just have to put a new tracking code. All right. So once you're here, you're going to see um, all the pages on your website and they're all going to have a specific amount of time. And the reason we're going, we're not going to page and screens or do anything like that. We want to see landing pages because landing pages are the ones that people are coming from Google and then landing on this page. And then they're most likely to bounce off. So what I will usually do is I'll go uh, set rows and I'll put the, like the maximum amount of rows. I'll put 250. And then I'm going to sort it obviously by time, right? So by how, you know, my best pages to my work, worst pages. So let's go like this. And at the top, you can see I have pages where we have an average session of seven minutes or five minutes or four minutes. This is all great. Like if it's, it's minutes at a time, I'm, it's, I'm sure it's amazing, but what, where we get into kind of issues is going to be when people are only on a page for a very, very short period of time. And then they bounce off. Now, I do want to preface this, but with a few things. First of all, when you see zero, zero seconds right here, this usually will indicate that it hasn't been tracked or it might be a bot or it might, I would not pay, uh, or there's another reason for this. So I wouldn't pay attention to zero too much. So if you have uh, zeros, um, it's very unlikely that you have uh, someone that lands on your page and immediately bounces off. 
um, within zero seconds. Usually this is going to be stuff that I'm going to ignore and I wait till I have more data. If I have a whole bunch of people going up on my page and bouncing right off, then maybe. But where I start paying attention to is going to be the one seconds and then I and, and up essentially. So I will be looking at the ones, you know, like if you're under 20 seconds or under 30 seconds, this is going to be my red zone where these these pages might have something that needs to needs to be improved. Now, um, I'm looking here. This is the home page. So the home page is a navigational page, which is perfectly fine. It's OK if it has 17 seconds. I would ignore that. I would just focus in on the articles that have a very low uh, very engagement time. And this is these are the pages I would renovate. Um, or alternatively, and I have done this in the past, I would just flat out remove it if it's not useful for my site. Let's say it's old content. I don't want to improve it. I do, and I'm, I see that the metrics are really bad and I just don't care about it. I might remove it. And I have removed things in the past. Now, where I personally find that you get the most bang for your buck in terms of renovating pages is not going to be on the pages that have one-offs. Because let's take a look at this one. My must-have kitchen trio two seconds. Now, this is a bad metric. We don't want that. Two seconds means someone's landing on page, they bounced off. But, but there's only one person. So this number might change in the future. Maybe someone else will land on the page. They'll stay there for a very long time and it'll be, this might be a great page, right? You, you never know. Maybe this was a bot and then it just landed, crawled it and left. Where we get into issues, and this, these are going to be the important pages to uh, address and renovate and uh, really take care of it are going to be the ones where you have a significant amount of uh, views and users and also a very uh, low engagement rate. So this one, can you wash gray with whites? 14 visits, 12, like uh, 14 uh, total visits. So I think 12 unique with an average of four seconds. That means that most people that are going to the page are bouncing off. This is a, a really bad sign. And if you've read one of my, I actually have a follow-up paper. If you haven't seen this one, it's on entities. It's on uh, how to achieve top Google rankings with entities. There's a full case study here on how Google uses entities to essentially um, initially rank a web page, and then user experience kind of uh, tones it down or adjusts it, either increases or decreases. And it, the the place where it's really interesting, look here. So you have your initial rankings, and then you have your adjustment period. And where it gets really interesting in my opinion, is going to be the initial score versus the final score. So here we have the initial score, which means that this page will have a lot of, re of really good entities. So if I go back here, okay, cool. So this page right here is ranking probably due to entities and Google just thinks, hey, this is a hyper relevant result, right? So if we go back into the article, this means that we have a high, high initial score right here, right? Because of this. But then because we have all these people bounce or like not bouncing off. Oh, well, they might be bouncing off actually. Yeah, four seconds. They're not staying on there very long because we have a whole bunch of people that are consequently leaving really quickly. Then Google will see, okay, wow, we need to adjust this page. We need to reduce the uh, the ranking of the page. And essentially they calculate the delta between the initial and the end result, which it sends a, a negative signal. If you do this across many, 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 many pages, then Google notices that, hey, every single page on this website is not very good. We should probably not give it as much traffic. This could potentially land you into trouble. So if you want to get the most bang for your buck, you want to uh, show Google that you have the most amount of users that are enjoying your page, this would be one of those key money pages that I would renovate before, let's say, master bathroom ideas. Because we've only had one visitor here. So the impact obviously on Google's metrics and measuring will be 12 times greater if we do it on this, if we fix this one up. Now I could keep on going and this, this is how I would essentially tackle um, any site renovation. So I wouldn't start with my best pages. I wouldn't start with um, the the pages that no one is visiting. So if I go all the way down and you have a, a, a page with, or if you're looking at your metrics, you have a page with zero visitors. Yeah, maybe Google doesn't like it, but Google's also not measuring user interaction on that page. However, here, this is a perfect one. So easy ways to clean a, a, a glass, a cloudy glass uh, top stove. This is a going to be a, a money pay, um, one of my best pages to renovate because it has 32 views, 33, um, and it has very low 
relative engagement time. So I'm going to show you this page and we're going to just go over how I would potentially renovate a page like this. Now, um, this page, when you land on it, is going to be one of those just generic articles that, you know, it's just, it's just there, right? It's just like, it doesn't, people will say, okay, cool. Am I just going to consume this or am I going to bounce off? And when you land, there's no sidebar, there's no nothing. And there's no real expertise on this page, especially if you've ever been concerned with about a wire, your uh, glass uh, ceramic glass stovetop looks cloudy. Then this article is perfect for you. This is kind of a bad way to start. Um, this is definitely not, so we've refined things since then. And then when you are landing, this is a big block of text. I recommend, you know, pre prepping the stove, right? So here we're going to prep the stove and then we're going to start answering. And then here we finally have our first answer, baking soda with vinegar in a, in a spray bottle. So what I recommend doing is twofold. First, whenever I'm trying to increase engagement on a page, I try to enter in the conversation that the user is already having within their head at the beginning uh, when I land on a page. So what I mean by that is if someone's looking and thinking about cleaning a glass stovetop, they're like, okay, what, what instruments, what instruments do I use? What do I, what products do I use? What should I uh, start with? How should I do this? So instead of saying, Hey, if you're looking for this, we have a perfect article for you. I would just start right off the top. The best way to clean a, gl a cloudy glass stovetop is going to be with um, baking soda and what was what's the first thing? Baking soda and a white vinegar spray bottle. Yeah. The next best way is going to be with a clean, uh, cleaner of the glass uh, stovetop, um, a commercial cleaner for glass stovetop. And then I could basically break this down as an article and I would add step one, step two, step three. So you could essentially take the same amount of content or same content that you already likely have on the page, reorganize it, kind of just remove a bit of fluff reorganize it and then just show it near the top and you're probably going to be able to rank or retain users a lot more. So this actually, this part right here um, is really good. So here we have uh, instructions right here. So after that, uh, pour the baking soda, let it rest 20 to 30 minutes. I would maybe put this in bold and I would just kind of adjust this. And with a bit of formatting, I think spending maybe two, three minutes, maybe no, five minutes on this page, we could significantly improve the engagement of this page. And then if we do that for all the most popular pages, so this is another one, 14 visitors, 30, 31 seconds. We could probably do the same thing here. This would be another one that I would go 38 seconds, cool facts about fridges. Um, this is another one, 50 with 44 seconds here, um, 44 seconds. And with my love, my love affair with velvet so uh, sofas, and then you start addressing the ones with really low time. So maybe a uh, clean lawn, uh, clean limestone fireplace, or how to open a can without a can opener. If this is a really bad page, you just remove it or just disable it, or maybe put it on draft for later. This is the type of stuff, and this is the type of renovation that I would do uh, in order to address stuff with the helpful content update. Now, uh, unfortunately. This is not a site-wide quick fix you could deploy in two seconds. This is a process where you need to improve it. And then one week later, you will remeasure the user engagement of how did your improvements uh, affect users on the page? How are they reacting? Because if you make improvements and then people are still bouncing off, people still don't like the content, then you need to make more and more and more changes. And this is why likely, um, the helpful content update has been so difficult for people to re uh, to recover from is because you can't just do a quick, simple fix. You need to actually address the content and improve it. So uh, I will, I do want to jump into one of the uh, case studies that has been recently, not case studies, but one of the websites that re recently recovered. And here's kind of what happened. So we can see here, Shaver Check kind of went down and then went back up and it's really cool. So this is almost a full recovery and are doing really well. I wanted to dive in because it actually um, is an affiliate website and it does follow a lot of the affiliate rules that you might see. However, the articles are really engaging. So we're going to just look at a few things that they're doing and then finally dive off of there. So you could actually see when you land on your homepage, they are pure affiliate where it says, let me kind of go scroll down. Okay. You know, is this are a shaver worth buying? Which shaver do I use? Buy a buying guide. Is this shaver like uh, comparing to bronze shavers? Here's the best Cyber Monday deals. Here's 
this review, this review, this review. So it's a pure affiliate review website. Um, so it means that you can still rank with pure affiliate reviews. Now, if I dive into a review itself, like say here, I have the Norelco uh, 9500. The reason that they, um, these articles are actually really engaging. So with the formatting, with the images, and with one more thing that I want to highlight, the articles are actually engaging. I think they're, they have a decent amount of engagement and people are staying to read the entire thing. And I think that's the main reason. So here, one of the things I want to highlight is they have this um, disclaimer here at the top. I might have, I might earn a commission from the affiliate links. This is a point of hot debate. Like, hey, does this affect your, your recovery or not? And here it's highlighted and people could text it. So this might or might not have any impact whatsoever. Maybe it does, but you know, I just wanted to point out that they have this at the top. Now, first thing I see is they have an image of a shaver right at the top and they have their brand name inside, like what kind of watermarked on the image. This makes it seem more authoritative. Then you have a review summary. And what I've noticed in here is therefore, well, first of all, they're using a lot of bold. I think they're over bolding in terms of just to capture people, but they are trying to really make the text as engaging as possible. And you tell, because look here, I'm going to bold this and then even italicize this. And then I think there's another, okay. It's the new standard is this is italicized here. It's just everything to retain the user's eye when you're reading the article. So when I go back here, this is kind of what I would call a big block of text. And then when I'm here, this is broken up into small little, very consumable chunks. You have, you know, bold, bold, italicize, and it, it, it you essentially, it's, it's, it'll grab you a lot more. Plus then you have another image right here. Is this, is this the sage chest saber check.com? Yeah, it does. It is watermark. Okay, cool. So here you have another image right in here. So you are essentially grabbed right from the, the start with an image, um, kind of engaging or easy to scan text, another image again, and then you have, you know, a more kind of engaging text. And what you will do, and what I've noticed a lot is that the articles that are engaging present a lot of facts, present a lot of information. So um, whenever you have generic things or opinions or just fluff, like, hey, we're about to do this, it doesn't retain people as much. Here, we can actually see they have a table that people absolutely love to consume. That's actually one of the kind of like engagement hacks Whenever you have a, a, a table, people will assume that there's a lot of value and a lot of information, a lot of facts within the tables. The tables are very good. And once again, as I kind of scroll through, you have a good rhythm of image, right? So we have, we have, oh my God, we have an image here. We have another uh, breakup uh, table of content here. And then we have another image here and we have another image here. And in between, they are also presenting facts and kind of comparing everything. And you just kind of scroll down and you have another image, another image, another image, and just it just keeps on going, keeps on going, keeps on going. So this is why these articles on their website are likely a lot more engaging and are likely retaining people and people are reading the entire article, even though it's an affiliate review, even though it might be highly biased, even though maybe they have used it, maybe they haven't. It actually seems like they have because these are real, you know, real, real images. And then you will have this entire article. Wow. This is a huge article. Wow. So I would assume that people would stay on this page for quite a long time. So this, and I think the same thing happens to another article, because this is just another article on our website, same type of format, same time of, there you go. Another table to kind of capture the user's attention, more images, 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 images. Yeah. So as even animated images. So as you kind of scroll through, it's very hard to not go, you know, instead not consume this page because of all the information, the imagery, the um, value that you essentially get from this page. So this, in my opinion, is how you go about recovering from the helpful content update. It's essentially identifying the pages that are getting visitors. So Google is monitoring the visitors and that are also not performing to your, to the standards that they should. So I uh, hope you guys have found this useful. If you have any questions, comments, let me know. As always, my name is Art Conscious. I'll talk to you soon.